Hey, what's up you guys? It's Dorothy and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to go into what I believe to be chapter one of this book. They are not labeled with chapters, so um, I will just read them and title them chapters and then go from there and title them with what the title of each section is, I guess. So yeah, let's get right into this video. It may contain sensitive topics and foul language. If you do not wish to continue, I suggest clicking off of the channel now. You have been warned. Chapter 1. Sir, she repeats, how soon do you want it to get there? I rub two fingers hard over my left eyebrow. The throbbing has become intense. It doesn't matter, I say. The clerk takes the package, the same shoebox that sat on my porch less than 24 hours ago, rewrapped in a brown paper bag, sealed with clear packing tape, exactly as I received it, but now addressed with a new name. The next name on Hannah Baker's list. Baker's dozen, I mumble. Then I feel disgusted for even noticing it. Excuse me? I shake my head. How much is it? She places the box on a rubber pad, then punches a sequence on her keypad. I set my cup of gas station coffee on the counter and glance at the screen. I pull a few bills from my wallet, dig some coins out of my pocket, and place my money on the counter. I don't think the coffee's kicked in yet, she says. You're missing a dollar. I hand over the extra dollar, then rub the sleep from my eyes. The coffee's lukewarm when I take a sip, making it harder to gulp down. But I need to wake up somehow, or maybe not. Maybe it's best to get through the day half asleep. Maybe that's the only way to get through today. It should arrive at this address tomorrow, she says. Maybe the day after tomorrow. Then she drops the box into a cart behind her. I should have waited till after school. I should have given Jenny one final day of peace. Though, she doesn't deserve it. When she gets home tomorrow or the next day, she'll find a package on her doorstep. Or if her mom or her dad or someone else gets there first, maybe she'll find it on her bed. And she'll be excited. I was excited. A package with no return address. Did they forget? Or was it intentional? Maybe from a secret admirer. Do you want your receipt? The clerk asks. I shake my head. A small printer clicks one out. Anyway, I watch her tear the slip across this serrated plastic and drop it into the waste basket. There's only one post office in town. <coughs> I wonder if the same clerk helped the other people on the list, those who get this package before me. Do they keep their receipts as sick souvenirs, tuck them in their underwear drawers, pin them on their cork boards? I almost ask for my receipt back. I almost say, I'm sorry, can I have it after all as a reminder? But if I wanted a reminder, I could have made copies of the tapes or saved the map. But I never want to hear those tapes again, through, though her voice will never leave my head, and the houses, the streets, and the high school we all will always be there to remind me. It's out of my control now. The package is on its way. I leave the post office without the receipt. Deep behind my left eyebrow, my head is still pounding. Every swallow tastes sour, and the closer I get to school, the closer I come to collapsing. I want to collapse. I want to fall on the sidewalk right there and drag myself into the ivy. Because just beyond the ivy, the sidewalk curves following the outside of the school parking lot. It cuts through the front lawn and into the main building. It leads through the front doors and turns into a hallway, which meanders between rows of lockers and classrooms on both sides, finally entering the always open door to first period. At the front of the room, facing students, will be the desk of Mr. Porter. He'll be the last to receive a package with no return address. And in the middle of the room, one desk to the left will be the desk of Hannah Baker. Empty. That is the end of this chapter. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!